Hey everyone, I'm Nico from Licks of the Beast and today I'm going to show you how I get my guitar sounds for my videos. This is probably the question that I get asked most often from guitar players. So with this video, I want to give you a quick run through of my setup as well as my actual settings. I feel it's important to specify that I am not trying to recreate Iron Maiden's guitar sounds from any album in particular. I just want a sound that I enjoy playing with and that sounds good with the guitar parts in Iron Maiden songs. The settings I'm going to show you today are what I use most of the time, especially on material from somewhere in time going forward. So there are other settings that I like to use for their older material, which have a bit more of a raw sound with less compression, but what I'll show you in this video is what I'm using most of the time. Some of you might find it surprising that I'm not using any physical amplifiers, speakers, mics, or pedals. But as someone who lives in an apartment in the city, I need to make my life easy and maintain good relationships with my neighbors. This setup allows me to do both. So to replace all of that gear, I use the Bias FX2 audio plugin. Quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored advertisement for Bias FX, nor am I endorsed in any way by Positive Grid, which is the company that produces this plugin. I paid for it, and despite having tried various other plugins on the market, I've stuck with this one because I'm comfortable with its layout and it offers me a wide variety of sounds for the different things I like to play. Out of the ones I've experimented with, Bias FX2 is the one I like best so far, so I've stuck with it. For those of you who might not be familiar with the term, let me explain real quick what exactly is an audio plugin. An audio plugin is basically a software that you use with your DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, or recording software, if you will. That can be a virtual instrument, an effect or series of effects, an amp and speaker emulator, etc. Bias FX2 basically emulates everything in a guitar player's signal chain. The amplifier, your noise gate, compressor, equalizer, effects, speaker, and microphone, as well as its placement in relation to the speaker. Before looking at the plugin, just a quick note about what I use to connect my guitar to my computer. So my guitar signal goes into a director passive DI box. Now the I box, DI stands for direct and jacked, takes an unbalanced high impedance signal and converts it to a balanced low impedance signal. For guitarists, this means that it allows you to connect directly through a mixer or an audio interface without a built-in preamp. From there, the signal goes into a very basic Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface with the gain set somewhere around the middle position. And that's connected to my computer via USB cable. That's it. Now let's take a look at the fun stuff, which is the plugin. To download Bias FX2, just go to the website positivegrid.com slash bias FX and follow the instructions. So as you can see, there are three different tiers to choose from. Standard, Pro, and Elite. And of course, the higher the tier, the more tonal options you'll get. So once you've downloaded and installed the version you like, you're good to go. Now, a quick note about system requirements. Their website states the minimum RAM is 4 gigs and 8 or higher is preferred. From experience, I can tell you that realistically, you will need 16 gigs. 8 gigs might be okay for clean tones with a little bit of ambient effects, but once you start asking your system to process high gain tones with various dynamic effects, 8 gigs of RAM really isn't going to cut it. With 16 gigs though, you're rocking and rolling. This is the basic control panel where you can see the setup you're using. So up here is the entire signal chain and down here is the individual component you've highlighted. So whenever you want to tweak the settings of a given component, just select it from the chain up here and edit it down here. So right now we're looking at the default preset which is called American Dream. This one is in the pop category and it's actually a pretty cool preset for low gain tones. I used this one in my cover of Alexander the Great during the clean interlude and it sounded awesome. Now to change preset, I will click on the name of the preset and that will take me to the list of presets organized by musical genre. 
I'm not going to talk about all of the various presets because I don't want this video to be a bias FX2 demo. I want this to be about my sound specifically. So I'm going to take you through my main setup, which is really just a modified version of a stock metal preset called Captain Mark. So let me start with that one so that you can see what I started with and how I've tweaked it. So let's go to the presets list under metal, Captain Mark. Here we go. And as you'll see, I only changed a few small things, but they do make a difference to the overall sound. So here's how this stock preset sounds. <laughs> Okay, now let's go to my preset. So to pull that up, I'm going to go into my user bank called Licks of the Beast and select the main one, which is called Licks of the Beast main. And as you can see, the chain is identical to Captain Mark, except I've added a reverb pedal. And the way you add pedals to the signal chain is you click on this add button here, then click on the type of effect you want, and then select whichever pedal you want from the list. So you can add it to the chain manually and just position it wherever you like, or you can double click and it'll position the pedal to its default position. The other difference is I keep the chorus pedal on with the controls turned almost all the way down so it's just there to add a little depth to the sound. Here's how that sounds. <laughs> Alright, so finally, let's get to the settings of the individual components themselves, starting with the amplifier. So this is based on the third channel of a Mesa Boogie Mark V, which is not at all what the guys in Iron Maiden use, but I just really like how this one sounds. It has a nice thickness, but it's not muddy or overwhelming in any way. So I have the gain set just below 4, and sometimes I might turn it up or down a little, like for certain solos, I like to turn it up, but usually it stays where it is, especially for rhythm guitar parts. This is already a fairly high gain amp, so there's no need to boost the gain too much, especially if you want to retain a good amount of clarity and definition. The bass is at 6, the middle is at 7. Now I find that having the mids up really makes the guitar come to life, and it gives it an aggressive punch. I will turn it down on at least one guitar, uh, sometimes to about four when I'm recording rhythm parts for covers with multiple guitars. And that's because having two or even three mid-heavy guitar tracks, sometimes layered on top of the original guitars, can be quite overwhelming and can even risk becoming muddy. 
So the treble is set to about half and the presence is at seven. The master volume is at about 6.5. The speaker cab I'm using here is the tread plate and the mic is a C414 condenser mic positioned in the middle. This is the exact same as the stock preset as I didn't feel the need to change anything here. Now for the drive pedal, which is basically a tube screamer. So I have the drive at three because again, you don't want to overdo it on the game. The level is at around six and the tone is usually somewhere between 3 and 6.5, depending on which guitar I'm using. The delay pedal is next, and I'll use this for lead playing only. So I usually keep it around 360 milliseconds of delay. The feedback and level are at 3, and the tone is somewhere close to the middle. Next, we have a little bit of reverb. So I like to keep this on most of the time, as I'm not a fan of dry guitars. So the level and the length are at about three. The tone is somewhere in the middle and the setting is on hall. As I mentioned earlier, I do like to keep the chorus on most of the time, just to give the sound a little bit more fullness. So I have the treble at six and the bass at four. The intensity, width and rate are just at about one, as I don't want it to sound very chorusy. Now, I will turn these three settings up a little bit whenever I'm playing something from Somewhere in Time or Seven Son of a Seven Son, and that's just because the chorus effect is somewhat intrinsic to the sound of those albums. <laughs> Whenever you're playing with a good amount of gain and volume and various effects, you're bound to get noise in your signal and that's where a noise gate becomes essential. So I have it set low as I don't want it killing all of my sustain or sounding overly crisp. This is just to eliminate any hissing or whooshing during pauses. So this is what my setup looks and sounds like. Now the question is, why this and not use an actual amplifier? or a JMP1 preamp like Maiden does, and then go into something like an Oxbox or a Captor X. For me, it's simply a question of practicality and convenience. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not trying to recreate Iron Maiden's guitar sounds, nor do I need to. I just want something that sounds good to me, that is reliable, easy to use, and hassle-free. Ultimately, this is a channel about Iron Maiden's music, and while sound might be a part of that, it's not what I want to prioritize at this time. Maybe in the future I will delve into amps and gear, but for the time being, I really want the focus to be on the music itself. And a complete plugin like Bias FX2 allows me to do that every day. I hope this was easy enough to follow along and that it answered at least some of your questions regarding my guitar tone. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like and do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned for more licks of the beast.